Imagine this, you're working on a song just like any other day in your studio on your computer and all of a sudden your computer crashes or freezes or maybe if you're a Mac user you get the spinning color wheel of death. Think okay, this has happened before, I'll just wait it out, not a big deal and you keep waiting and waiting and still nothing. Maybe your palms start to get a little bit sweaty, you start to get a little bit nervous, you keep waiting until you get to the point where you realize okay, maybe I need to do a hard restart Everything's gonna be fine, but again, you're starting to get a little bit nervous, starting to wonder if something's going wrong. So you restart your computer, only then to find out it's not turning back on, or maybe you get some cryptic error message, and you get really nervous wondering, okay, what am I gonna do now? Yeah, this happened to me back in 2019, and I lost everything off my computer. At this time, I did not have a system in place for backing up my files. You know, every now and then I dump, you know, all my files, all my sessions, everything onto an external hard drive and I'd call it good, but it was not something I did frequently and it was definitely not organized. You know, when you do it that way, you don't really know what's on your hard drive sometimes and you don't know what to replace and what to update and yeah, it's just very disorganized, very infrequent and just really not reliable at all. You know, this is always one of those things I was like, oh, I'll deal with this later. Like, I know I need a better system, but whatever, it's not a big deal. You know, of course, I would hear about people losing their computers in house fires or their computers got stolen or they crashed, but it's one of those things you kind of just write off and like, oh, you know, that's never gonna happen to me. It's not a big deal, I'll deal with it later. Thankfully, I did have a lot of stuff backed up, but definitely not everything. And most of my recent work at that time was just instantly gone and there's no way I could get it back. More importantly, I had a lot of personal files that I just lost forever. For example, I had a lot of personal photos and videos of my best friend and I from all the years that we lived together and he's since passed away and now I never get those photos and videos back, which really, really stinks. As it goes, of course, this is also a very, very busy time for me. At that time, I had a bunch of projects on my plate. I was working on active briefs for a lot of really big TV shows, had a lot of cool opportunities, and now I had no working computer. So just really, really bad time for this to happen, but of course, that's the way that life often works. So I was in quite the panic trying to figure out, okay, what computer should I get, and how do I prevent this from ever happening again? Well, it's easy to say, you know, that stinks for you. That's probably never gonna happen to me. You know, what are the odds? learn from my mistake and just get a system in place and make sure you get this stuff taken care of. At that point, when this all was happening, I vowed, you know, I, I need to make sure that I figure this out and never let this happen again. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the system that I've put into place. First, I'm gonna show you the cloud storage service that I use called Backblaze. And what this does is it pretty much takes care of all my cloud storage in the background. So as long as my computer's on and connected to Wi-Fi and I have my external hard drives plugged in, it actually backs up everything in the background for me. So I don't have to worry about, you know, replacing files if I update them or anything. I mean, it, it literally just does everything for me and it's super, super easy. And it's one of those things, you know, out of sight, out of mind. I don't have to worry about it. It's just taken care of. I signed up for the service back in 2019 when this happened. And honestly, I don't really think I've thought about this since. It just runs in the background for me and keeps everything backed up. Super easy, super efficient. In addition, I'm also gonna show you how I utilize external hard drives. And because it's something that I've gotten asked about from a co-writer, I'm also gonna show you how that relates to music production. So I'm gonna show you how I run my sessions off an external hard drive. As well, I'm gonna show you how I run all my sample libraries off external hard drives. The reason you wanna do this, obviously it's gonna keep your internal storage very low, but it's also gonna take a lot of the CPU power off your internal drive. So if you're running all your samples and your session off an external drive, just basically frees up a lot of room for your internal drive to work a lot smoother and more efficiently. So first, let's talk about cloud storage. Back in 2019, when this happened, I reached out to a few friends, posted in a few groups, just trying to get some advice from people. And as far as cloud storage goes, probably 90 to 95% of the advice I got was all the exact same. Almost every single person that answered said, just go with Backblaze. Your life will be so much easier. You won't have to think about it. And so yeah, that's exactly what I did. Since 2019, when I signed up for Backblaze, I genuinely don't think I've thought about cloud storage once. So this isn't a sponsored video. I just highly, highly love this product and the service, and I highly recommend it. And that being said, I can show you exactly how it works. All right, so we click on the Backblaze logo here up at the top, the little flame, pull this up, and you'll see right away, you are backed up as of today, 5.35 p.m. So I already know that all my files, all my data is already backed up. Like I said, it just does it in the background, super easy. Click on settings here, and let this load up. You'll see you can choose, um, obviously you'll have your internal hard drive backed up, and then you can choose all of your external hard drives. So you can see I have all my external hard drives plugged in, all five of these solid state drives, and those are all checked. So I know that as long as Backblaze is running, and I think you just have to have them plugged in once every like 14 days, that I know it's gonna back up everything for me in the background, super easy. As far as performance, you can choose how much of your CPU you wanna to dedicate to this. When I did my first backup, I think I did a little bit more just because it took a while to get everything going, but it really doesn't take much to just maintain and kind of keep things updated. You can choose how often things back up. I just 
leave it on continuously. You can choose once per day or only when you choose, but again, just let it run continuously in the background. Super easy and you never have to think about it. So really great service, highly recommended. I think it's like 70 bucks a year. So it averages out to be like six bucks a month. Really cheap, really easy. Uh, couldn't recommend it anymore. All right, now that we've covered cloud storage, let's go ahead and talk about external hard drives. So I'm gonna be completely transparent with you. I am not the kind of person who's super passionate about tech gear and hard drives. And you know, I don't know all the specific details about which hard drive is better. I do know enough to get me by, but luckily for me, I have some friends who are really into that kind of stuff and they're super smart. So again, when this happened, I reached out to a few different friends and kind of said, this is my budget. This is what I'm looking for. What would you recommend? So one uh, friend in particular helped me out quite a bit. I didn't get permission, so I'm not gonna name drop him, but he's really good at this stuff. You know, he does all the tests of different hard drives of read and write speeds and all that kind of stuff. So I definitely trusted his opinion and he kind of pointed me in the right direction. And so I'm gonna show you the hard drives that he recommended. And then actually just like maybe a year ago, I reached out to him again uh, because I ran out of room and needed another external hard drive. And so I'll show you that one as well. All right, so first actually I'm gonna to switch to my phone camera so I can show you physically how I have all these hard drives set up. And then I'll actually go into my computer and show you how I set everything up there. All right, so this is how I have everything set up. The first SSD drives that I told you about are these silver ones down here. Um, some important things to point out is when you're buying these to know whether or not they need external power and these ones do so I do have a, a powered USB hub that those run through and the newer one that I got does not so that can run straight into the laptop here obviously and with these hard drives you actually buy the hard drive in the enclosure separately and another important thing that really helps as well is to get your laptop up on a stand uh, off your desk and I do have this cooling pad as well which has four fans it keeps air flowing keeps my computer cool, keeps everything running efficiently. And if you're interested in any of this stuff, I will have links down below for everything if you wanna check it out yourself. Now that I've shown you how everything is set up physically and kind of how I have everything routed, we can go ahead and jump into the computer and I'll show you how I do things there. All right, to start out, we'll just open up one of these hard drives and kind of just briefly show you. Um, I do have my logic folder here, so you can see all my sessions are here. And then all my sample libraries, like big orchestral libraries or any uh, big virtual instrument that I'm gonna use that stores a lot of samples or use a lot of audio samples. All of those are on external drives as well. So you can see I have a bunch on this drive. And if we just pick other drives, you know, I have a bunch of different instruments on here and this is where I keep them. And depending on what instrument you're using or what software instrument you're using, it might be different. But just because it's the most common and most people use it, I will show you how to quickly do that for native instrument stuff or for complete. So if you open your native access and you go up here to your account and then preferences, when you're downloading instruments, you just want to choose this content location and set that to your external drive. Now, if you already have them installed on your computer, you'll have to move those and then I think you just relink them. That's uh, a topic for another video. However, if that's something you want me to cover, I can, you know, I'm more than happy to do that. So I'm editing this video right now and I realized that there's a couple things that I forgot to mention when it comes to external hard drives. The first is if you're a Mac user, I would recommend that you have one dedicated external drive to have your time machine backup. What this is gonna do is essentially clone your operating system. So it's a little bit different than just backing up your files. It's actually going to clone your OS X. So if something should happen to your computer, it's just a lot easier to get things up and running. The second thing is when you're looking into buying external hard drives, I would recommend that you go with an SSD, which is a solid state drive, as opposed to the older models, which are the HDDs or hard disk drives. The older ones, the hard disk drives are actually gonna have physical moving parts and a spinning disk. They can be kind of noisy, they can break, and the quality of performance is quite a bit lower. So just wanted to make sure that I got those points in there as well. All right, so then as far as running sessions off an external drive, we'll just open up Logic here, go new from template, and we'll just, this is the template that I use to start basically every project. I actually do have another full video explaining how to make a template like this and how I made it. So I'll link that as well if you wanna check that out. But then if you wanna run your session off an external drive, just immediately save it there. So we'll just go file, save as. Now again, I do all of mine on SSD one here. So I'll just find that and choose my logic folder. And I like to keep things very organized and in different folders. So if I was doing this for a specific client or artist, I'd go in this folder and so on. However, if it's just something I'm having fun with, I'll just usually start in this open work in, uh, works in progress folder. And the way I like to organize things, I'll do by the year first, and it is July 24th, so 07, 24. And then I'll just do Sunday piano idea or something random. And then when you save in Logic, you wanna make sure that you save as folder. So if you save it as a package, it's actually going to be like one file that's like a, an enclosed or zipped file and you can't really access it. Or if you do it as a folder, 
you can see that you can actually open this up, access the audio files, and the reason I like to do this is because if I'm working with an artist or a collaborator and they send me vocal stems or once we're done, once we have our like split sheet or our agreements and any other paperwork, I like to actually keep that all in the folder so everything, um, all the different songs assets are in the song folder. So it makes it super, super easy and just go ahead and hit save. And now once this is saved on an external drive, it's actually going to be running the session off that external drive. So keeps it super easy, keeps your CPU low, and now obviously that session will be stored on your external drive. And if you're using something like Backblaze, it's all going to be automatically updated for you with your cloud storage. All right, I hope this video was helpful. I did kind of skim through some of this stuff pretty quickly. So if there's anything you want me to dig deeper into, or if you have any questions about and you know anything I've covered, please comment below and let me know your questions. I'd be more than happy to answer those or make another video if needed or if you have any other ideas for future videos and your requests, please do let me know. I want this channel and these videos to be as valuable as possible and I really do want to help people out. So that being said, thanks for watching. Have a good day. So super easy, super easy.